to talk about an introduction to area and volume. So first with rectangular shapes, when we're talking about area in this particular case, you can see that we have eight inches by five inches. And because there are two inches, that results in an exponent of two. So this two tells me I am two dimensional. I have two sides. So you multiply, right? Length times width and you get the area. When we're talking about volume, we now have three dimensions. We've got length, we've got width, and we've got height. So because we have three dimensions, inch times inch times inch gives me an exponent of three because that denotes three dimensions. And you can see we have three labels. Again, we just multiply them all together, keep that in mind. It works the same with circles. Um, pi r squared. The radius is squared, so we have radius times radius. That would be three inches times three inches. Again, inch times inch gives me an exponent of two. And then when we're talking about volume, volume equals pi r squared times the height. So now I have radius times radius times the height. And you can see one, two, three. Three inches gives me an exponent of three. We are three-dimensional. So we are going to be using rectangles and circular shapes in some problems here. So why are the units on area squared? Because it's two-dimensional. When you're looking at it, you have length and width. So because there are two of them, the units are squared. What about volume? Well, with volume, we're talking about three-dimensional shapes, length, width, height. So because they are three-dimensional, right, we've got length times width times height. They have three labels, and that gives me a cubic, right? So they are cubic because they are cubed, three of them. So calculate the volume of the potato chip can to the right. Now this is a cylinder, so we're going to be using volume equals pi times the radius squared times the height. So I have pi. My radius is 1.5 inches squared times the height of 8.5. Now remember that exponents are just repeated multiplication. That's like 1.5 times 1.5. So if you use the pi button, you get 60.08 cubic inches. If you would happen to use 3.14 as an approximation for pi, right, that's the only thing that changes, you would end up with 60.05 inches cubed off by just three hundredths, depending on whether you approximate pi or you use the exact um, sign, button, whatever. Two-dimensional values are measured of a flat surface, like if you're going to paint your wall. So this square is one inch long and one inch wide. Therefore, one times one is one square inch. A sheet of paper is 11 inches by 8.5 inches. The area of that would be 8.5 times 11, which I believe is 93.5 93 square inches. And again, because both of these have labels in inches, that's two of them, right? So we're up, we're up to two. Now, how would we convert that to square centimeters, right? So think about this. If I have inches times inches in my numerator, if I want to get rid of that, I need inches times inches in the denominator. So I would need 2.45 centimeters times 2.54 centimeters. Basically, you've got to do the conversion twice because we need both of these inches to cancel out with both of those. So what's easy to say is if you have a label that is squared, then when you do the conversion, you need to do that conversion twice because 1 plus 1 is 2. So convert 93.5 square inches, that makes that a, let me make it a two we can read, to centimeters. So I know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters, but one inch does not equal two. So if I do that again, then I can say one plus one is two. I multiply all the way across and I get approximately 603 square centimeters. And notice how my centimeters are also squared because one, two. I have two centimeters that makes it squared.